from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Online. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Well, and welcome back to the Cube's virtual coverage of AWS Amazon Web Services Public, Sec Public Sector Summit Online. I'm John Furrier, your host. We have a great guest, Cube alumni, Kate Goodall, Halcyon, co-founder and CEO, also known as the Halcyon House in the DC area. Kate, great to see you. Thanks for coming on virtually. You too, thanks for having me, John. We can't be there in person. Normally we're in person in Bahrain, we're going to these events. We can't do it this year because of COVID and the pandemic. Uh, but this topic that I'm proud to talk to you about is the Bahrain Women Intensive Program and just diversity in the global tech scene in general. So first, tell us what's going on with the 2021 Bahrain Women's Initiative, Intensive Initiative. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you know, um, Halcyon Incubator has been running for um, about seven years now. Um, we've welcomed during that time over 150 entrepreneurs uh, through our full-time fellowship program, which you were there, John, you saw, um, you know, is, is a really unique program that includes residents in a, uh, a house in Georgetown uh, so that people really get to sort of form a community. Um, but the full-time residential program isn't the right fit. So we also offer these intensive housing incubator programs for early stage social entrepreneurs uh, from different parts of the world and in different industries and sectors. Um, AWS has been an amazing partner, both for the full time fellowship program and for many of these intensives, um, including one that was focused earlier this year on entrepreneurs in opportunity zones in our very own city. Um, and, but this new intensive partnership is designed specifically to support tech oriented social enterprise startups that are founded by women and based in Bahrain. Um, so it sits really nicely at this intersection of, of Halcyon's goal of um, supporting uh, entrepreneurs who are often uh, underserved or underrepresented and AWS's um, uh, very clearly stated goal of diversifying leadership in tech. I was there last year in person in Bahrain and um, I went to the women's diversity um, breakfast and I'm like, oh, this is exciting. And I had to give up my seat, there was so many people, there's high demand. Um, so I want to ask you, what does this program hope to achieve in the intensive initiative? Yeah, um, I mean, there's certain things that we're always seeking to achieve in supporting and serving sort of the brightest minds and the best ideas in social enterprise. Uh, and in many ways, this one is is no different. Um, but we are really looking to to um, find some incredible startups in Bahrain. Um, applications for the program uh, start today. Um, and we'll be measuring, uh, you know, the success of the program on a number of factors, um, as we always do, you know, uh, ultimately it's the number of jobs that, that get created, the um, the quality and quantity of the impact of the of the startups, um, and and ultimately you know revenue and dollars raised, all of the things that you would measure a successful business by. Um, uh, so we're just really excited to find some incredible ventures that fit really well in this in the the selection criteria, um, and we'll be looking to everyone to help spread the word about this great opportunity. Well, congratulations on your new program. I want to ask you specifically if you can give some examples of the kinds of startups you're hoping to attract. So as you look at the candidates, what's going to be the criteria? You mentioned there's a criteria. What jumps off the page in your mind? Yeah, so we want people that um, really understand their why. You know, why are they starting that business? Um, and and ideally people that have um, a really good idea for a, uh, a rapidly scaling tech startup that also has a double bottom line attached to it. So uh, something where whereby the, the as the business model succeeds and scales and achieves, um, so too with the impact that is inherent in that um, in that model. Um, you know, some some examples from just past cohorts uh, at Halcyon. You know, we've had most recently um, an incredible entrepreneur that came out of um, the U.S. prison system and uh, was really interested in uh, reducing recidivism and and worked. On a tech startup that allows families to communicate with incarcerated loved ones uh, where, uh, through a tech platform where you can convert your um, text to a loved one into a postcard that then can be sent into um, the, the system because uh, obviously people aren't allowed to communicate through cell phones when they're incarcerated. Um, so that's a good example of something where, you know, the, the profit and impact really scale themselves. Um, you know, similarly from just this, you know, recent cohorts, we um, had a, uh, 
a founder who herself suffered from pulmonary, uh, pulmonary hypertension. And she created a really great uh, wearable device that can attach to your ear. It looks just like an earring. It's quite fashionable, actually. I want one. And uh, um, it lets you know how um, your oxygen level is um, because she just didn't have access to something that was that easy and wearable but needed to monitor her oxygen level. Turns out that's actually really a useful piece of technology during COVID. So, you know, we're looking for people that are thinking about healthcare, thinking about the environment, thinking about education, um, and creating a sustainable business model that that uh, will help them to scale that idea. I want to get into the whole social entrepreneurship conversation. It's a really great one. I want to unpack that, but let's stay on this program. Um, it's super exciting. How do people get involved? I mean, I know it's open, but there's some criteria. Um, you mentioned the startups you're looking for changing the world, double bottom line. How do people get involved? Uh, really excited you asked that because I, you know, I hope that some people that are watching can help us. Um, certainly uh, uh, going to the homepage of our website, halcyonhouse.org. Um, if anyone knows any great social entrepreneurs um, uh, in Bahrain, please let them know and help us spread the word. Uh, really happy to be working with AWS and um, Startup Bahrain to do so. Um, but we we want to, you know, make it as, as far and wide as possible. So both for people that are interested in in applying to the program and also people that are interested in helping uh, because we always pull together a vast network of mentors and advisors and investors uh, to really make the program as robust as possible. Uh, they should, I would encourage everyone to, to reach out and get in touch um, uh, either through the website or um, uh, at, uh, at Halcyon Inspires on social media so that our team can get back to you. Final question is how, um, what, how will the selection process work? And when will so the winners be We're announced? partnering with uh, AWS and Startup by Rain to um, select the best startup ventures. They'll be notified in December um, and uh, the program will begin virtually in January. And what do the winners get? They get um, money? Do they get mentoring? What can you talk about yeah. the package? So every um, incubator program is a little bit different, but generally they all get um, uh, uh, some serious training, uh, an assigned mentor, um, a specific skill, skill series uh, that's bespoke to that intensive and those founders needs. Um, but more than likely this one will include as, as they all do, um, you know, ways to plan to uh, acquire customers, ways to improve your business model and, and make good projections, ways to think about um, investment and how to understand um, investment and, and um, get investment should you need to. Um, so it'll have all of that along with marketing and branding and um, how to measure impact, but then also some bespoke things, you know, once we know exactly what the founders needs are um, and, and then some very bespoke um, advisors and mentors in accordance with those needs. And really nurturing that startup and that pro project to getting some traction and hopefully track into some funding vehicles, I imagine, right? Is that part absolutely, of the program? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and access to DC's, you know, uh, great landscape when it comes to this kind of thing, both in terms of sort of um, the institutions that are here and the investment that is here. Um, and all of them will also, of course, receive um, AWS cloud computing credits and technical support, uh, which we found to be profoundly helpful for all of our um, uh, tech startups or, or tech enabled startups. You know, I think one of the, that's one of the things that people don't realize is some free credits out there as well. Take advantage of those, that's awesome. And I love how this ecosystem nurturing here, when I was in Bahrain, I noticed that very young demographics, changing demographics, diversity is huge, but like here in North America and all around the world, the lack of diversity in the tech sector has been a big conversation, it's always happening. These impact driven businesses actually can solve two things. You're doing a program <laughs> that impacts the diversity as well as solves the problem for diversity. Talk about double bottom yeah. line. Can you talk about yeah, this or, diversity or challenge? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think, you know, it's interesting because we all know that diverse teams outperform. Um, we all understand the imperative to do that, but you're right. It's it's not just a U.S. problem or a Bahrain problem. It's a global problem, um, you know. And I think one of the ways to solve it is to go early, uh, because we know that uh, women founders and founders of color and, and other marginalized founders, um, you know, start businesses roughly at the same rate, but they generally don't grow as big and they don't um, uh, often get as much investment. In fact, the investment uh, numbers are quite stark in terms of who receives venture capital. Um, so we know that there's a lot uh, left to disrupt, but we also know that if we're going to solve the problems that we all face right now, that we need 
ev the whole population involved in solving it. So we're really interested in, in, in creating a much better ecosystem everywhere for, for women founders. Um, and we know that that requires the support of, of everyone, regardless of gender and background and, and lived experience. Um, so it is, it is an imperative. Um, but it's also a tremendous opportunity, um, you know, to get more people involved. Um, and Bahrain's got some incredible women and some great um, uh, uh, resources and, and um, pieces of the ecosystem already in place to, um, I think, really be a leader in this area. Yeah, Startup Bahrain too, you mentioned that they have a great program there. They're really there to, to help the entrepreneur. And I think the key here, and I want to get your reaction to this is that not only is that important to get off the ground and having someone to be around and be in a community that fosters the kind of innovation thinking and, and getting started, great. But you've had a very successful program at the Halcyon House, halcyonhouse.org, as you mentioned in the URL. You've had success, but you've been physically in DC. What have you learned from the Halcyon House, house uh, success that you're applying that could be applied for others to learn? Yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, we've had, um, as I mentioned, about 150 um, you know fellows come through our, our doors, and and they've gone on to create over 1,800 jobs around the world, uh, receive 150 million dollars in funding, which for early stage social social ventures is is a really good mark of success, um, and they've gone on to impact the lives of more than 2.5 million people around the world. So our hope for this program is that you know we'll be able to help empower these founders. Um, in, in Bahrain to do exactly those things and to be able to scale their ventures um, to create that impact. Um, you know, we've learned a lot about, um, uh, you know, what these startups need, um, you know, that goes beyond just sort of the, the, office space and 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 sort of traditional incubator offerings that they need a really strong community around them to celebrate their successes and also to help them with their lows um entrepreneurship is a very um rocky journey and so that community becomes really really important um so we know a lot about building um you know supportive uh, nurturing community um we also know that you know, women, when they go to get investment, are going to receive 70% uh, more prevention questions. And this is even from women venture capitalists, yeah. right? They just, uh, venture capitalists are um, creatures of habit and they generally will um, just uh, look at the patterns, Pattern successes yeah, and trends that they've that. had yeah. and repeat those. Yeah. So they're going to be looking for the same types of people that they funded in the past, which are traditionally young white males. And and so we know that just by virtue of, of um, the system that we all live in uh, and, and what it's implanted in all of us, that that women are going to receive more questions about the risk of their business, many, many more than they will about the opportunity. So how do we train women for that landscape? You know, how do we train them to answer the questions about their, the risk realistically and, and fairly, but pivot so that they get the same opportunity as, as a male entrepreneur perhaps to answer uh, questions about the ceiling as well as the floor. Yeah, and address it straight up and understand the criteria and having Absolutely. that confidence. And I think that the great news is that we're all changing and we're all open to it. And there's more funds now like this and your leadership yeah. is I just, love that um, point, John. I think, you know, I think that um, everyone's eyes are open, right? And I can say that sort of with a really uh, strong sense of conviction that like, 2020 is is a great year for acknowledging this problem and for I think a lot of joint motivation to really properly address it. So I'm actually feeling really optimistic about it. And we're at a cultural crossroad. Everyone kind of knows it. You're seeing it play out on the big stage of the world. Uh, and again, your leadership has been doing this. And I want to get your thoughts on this because you mentioned entrepreneurship, the ups and downs. Some call it a roller coaster, highs and lows. You have great days and you have really, really bad days. <laughs> and it's even compounded when you're not in the pattern matching world of what people are seeing if you're a woman or underrepresented minority or group. I got to ask you the question around mental health because one of the things, especially with COVID, is having that community because the ups and downs swings are important that people maintain their confidence and mentors and community add value there. Can you talk about that important piece of the equation? Because it's, it plays a big role. It's off, often not talked about much. Um, it is talked now more than ever, than ever before, but still not enough. There's community there. It's having yeah, the yeah, support. Yeah, I can. You know, we, we talk about it a lot at Halcyon and what people need to prioritize their mental health as they grow a business. And ultimately, if you're not 
doing a good job of that, your business will not succeed because your team won't be healthy and you're, it just it compounds. Um, so it's really imperative and, and it does take a toll on founders um, and entrepreneurs, I think, in, in uh, higher degrees than it does in the general population uh, because a small crack can become a chasm um, if people are not careful. Um, and everyone knows, even if you're super passionate about something, putting in 20 hours a day every day continuously is eventually going to catch up with you, right? So you have to create healthy habits from the beginning for you and your team. Um, and and certainly during COVID, we've seen some of those things exacerbated due to isolation. So that community piece becomes really, really important. Um, I don't think she would mind me saying, so I'm going to, to mention that one of our previous uh, entrepreneurs, Anne Yang, brilliant, brilliant woman, um, actually did a great piece. Um, uh, you can just Google Anne, Anne Yang, um, entrepreneur, depression, um, um, mental health and and it'll come up for you but um just a really candid expose on what it is like to um be an entrepreneur that perhaps struggles with with mental health yeah it's super important and i gotta say i really love your work i've always been an admirer of the halcyon mission and the people behind it at the halcyon house and now you're taking it to bahrain under, with an intensive kind of program it's a global landscape uh, final word kate what should people know about this program? Summarize it real quick. Um, we're just super happy to be uh, reaching out and supporting um, a greater number of uh, talented founders from the Middle East um, uh, with all that Bahrain uh, and our partners, Startup Bahrain and AWS, have to offer. Um, you know, we, we love to expand um, our work to serve more and more entrepreneurs, and we couldn't be more excited to support these women. Onward and upward, a better time now than ever. It's going to be a big change happening, big cultural change. You're a part of it. Thank you for joining me Thank on this you, John. segment. Great to see you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm John Furrier here at theCUBE Virtual covering AWS Public Sector Online. Thanks for watching.